Hello and welcome. My name is Min Walkenton with Pragmatic Works. In today's video, we're going to talk about a pretty commonly discussed Power BI topic, modeling. Sort of, kind of. I mean, the concept and the idea is around modeling. And actually, we recently just had a full Learn with the Nerd session given by Mitchell Pearson around Power BI data modeling. But in these smaller, more compact scenarios where we're learning and talking about these elements, we can't discuss every single little item. So I'm gonna take the opportunity in this YouTube video to one, remind you why we wanna focus and make sure we have date tables inside of our models. Now there's some uh, times you can kind of think about certain scenarios, reporting requirement, size and amount of data. But when you're considering about like a scalable solution, a scalable model inside Power BI, a date table is something we should be looking at and we kind of discuss that and talk about it best practice wise in every, almost every training we do. But even if you follow those best practices, you might not be aware of a certain feature that's available to you within Power BI Desktop. It's actually on by default and it can actually be detrimental to you if you're going through the motion, if you are creating your own dedicated date table. There's actually a little element of redundancy that's happening in the background that you may not be even aware of. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A specific feature that's called auto date time intelligence. You may or may not already know about this, but we're going to talk about the impact of it, really what it's doing for you. Once again, remind yourselves why we're creating those date tables. And is there a scenario where auto date time might work? So we're going to discuss those pieces. I'm going to show you as well if you kind of once you take all the details in how you potentially could disable that and what the impact of that is. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So first and foremost, a date table. Just in case, we always talk about this in our trainings, regardless of the link about you know best practices when we talk about data modeling, having a dedicated date table. This gives us a uniform standardized continuous set of dates, which is gonna help us in scenarios like when DAX and like taking advantage of time intelligence, it's gonna allow us to create some dedicated hierarchies that we can be in control over. These are gonna add quality of life things and some performance enhancements in the overall kind of scale of the model itself, right? So day tables, it's a good thing. You can find tons of templates out there that you can build from the Power Query Editor. There's actually DAX functions, calendar and calendar auto that are in play that you can create day, tab day tables with. We have lots of different things and you can find tons of this. We actually have some of our own videos that discuss creating day tables. So that's not a new topic, so we won't be spending today's video around that. Just know it's there. When we teach anything, we generally talk about this. Devin actually has, Devin Knight has his own blog and there is a, um, a blog insert there which has code so that you can generate your own, pick a start date, pick an end date, and it creates a date table in the Power Query Editor for you. A uh, very streamlined, very simple table that'll serve exactly the purposes of it. And if you think about it, Pretty much every business, every organization has the same kind of concept with a day table. I mean, everything is the same. The only thing that changes from my day table that I need from my report with your day table is really the range that we're interested in, right? Because I might only care about three years of data. You might care about 10. And also, what does the date itself represent, right? If something happens on January 1st, for me, let's assume we're in the same time zone, right? Let's not get into technicalities here. If we're in the same time zone, January 1st is the same as your January 1st if you're in the same time zone. But what does that mean to the business, right? Is that fiscal quarter four of last year? Then that's different because I'm doing quarter one of this year, right? But those are different, those are descriptive attributes that we apply inside. So additional columns we have within that very same date table. So those are the things that change and vary between day table to date table. But you can find a lot of really nice template and kind of uh, pre-created scripts to allow you to do this. But like I said, we're not focusing on that today. DAX, once again, if you're taking advantage of time intelligence, this can be extremely beneficial for it. So can you not leverage time intelligence? If you don't create a dedicated date table, and you probably know the answer is, well, yes, you can do time intelligence. You're not, this, you don't have to have your own dedicated date table, but how does that work? How does this function? We're told that when you use a time intelligence function, right, if we're using date to year to date, if we're using total year to date or something of like this, that we need to point to a, it says a date column. So we point to our date table, a date column, because we need an unfiltered continuous set of dates. That's kind of the prerequisite there. So how does this work when we don't have a date table? And that's what we're gonna dive into and we're gonna explore because Power BI, in an effort to assist users, if you do not have a dedicated date table, they give us a feature called Automat Auto Date Time Intelligence. It's literally an option that you can turn on within the options and settings of the desktop application. This, there's actually two sections where you can set it up and we'll look at that. Well, what this is meant to do, this effectively uses the calendar function. It's in the background, right? The literally auto date time creates hidden date tables for every date, date time column that you have in your model. It creates literally a 
full day table. It looks at the minimum and maximum value for that column. It creates a day table within that range with I think it's five or six columns in there, right? You have your classic year, you have your month, you have your month number, you have your quarter, you have your week, you have your day. It has this built in just automatically does it uses once again the calendar function but you don't see it you don't have access to it you you don't see it in the model view you don't see it in the data view they're not accessible to you but it's doing it for every date date time so and potentially in some models and that can be a lot and we're going to see it in the very simple example we're going to look at today in the resources like the download that you have available as part of this video it's a very simple power bi file we've used actually this data set tons before but we'll look at that. We'll show you exactly what we're talking about. I'll show you the telltale signs to know, hey, is auto date time on? Even before going into the options, you can see. And then what is the impact of us? Well, what is the impact of having it on? And then the impact and benefits of us turning it off when we're doing the proper process of creating our own dedicated date table. Well, that's, that's the big thing to make sure you understand here. This is something you wanna be aware of because if you are taking the time, you're making the effort to kind of, you know, go through the proper modeling process and you have your own date table that you're gonna maintain, you don't need auto date time intelligence, right? So what are scenarios when you might be like leaving this feature and it's okay? Maybe in much smaller models, something that isn't gonna be scaling out to just a large number of records. The number of tables that you have in there are pretty limited. The amount of actual date related items maybe is very small, one or two columns in one table. There's a possibility that in that case, you don't wanna take the time and effort to have another table, curate a date table, because it's a bit unnecessary because of the small nature and size of the model itself because now that we know auto date time is turned on, it's actually created an invisible date table forming, right? So in those smaller situations, you can probably be fine, but as you're moving towards a more scalable solution, this is one of the things you need to be aware of. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna dive right in. We're gonna open up the basically completed file that we have available to you as part of the resources of this class. And we're gonna take a look first at the signs so you can see exactly what's going on here. And initially when you look at it, you're like, well, that's pretty nice. There's a bit of quality of life here that uh, seems good. Uh, but then I'm gonna show you behind the curtains, right? And as part of this process, we are gonna lean into an external tool. Um, so if you wanna download that, it is a free download. It is gonna be DAC Studio. There's other external tools that would make this available as well. I just like the visibility of this. It's very simple and sweet. And we'll show you all of these hidden tables. We'll see the impact of it on the model. And then we'll show once it's been cleaned up. So that's the journey we're gonna take. Let's go ahead, escape the PowerPoint, and dive into the Power BI proper. So once again, this is just the file that should be in your downloads here. It's just called completed model. Just open that up. This is an imported model. So if you do try to refresh this, or if you try to go into the Power Query editor for this, obviously it's not gonna work because this has been saved with file paths for my machine, right? So if you want to get this working, refresh it, go to the Power Query editor, which is unrelated to what we're doing here, uh, you just would have to go ahead and reconfigure the data source connection strings, the settings. Um, the Excel file that was used for this is included in the download too, but that would be something else if you're just trying to do something separate. So let's just take in the model as is, right? If we go here and we examine, we got, what is that? Seven tables available to us, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And something that is a pretty easy indication of showing, hey, is auto date time intelligence, has that been turned on on my model? And you can see when we expand this, there's this icon right here. See next to birth date, date of first purchase, there's two in the customer table. We can see there's one in the date table. There's actually a couple in internet sales table. So we have a couple of date tables, right? A couple of date columns. And they all have this little icon. And when you expand it, this is like a system generated hierarchy. Here's birth date. And within it, I can see there's a hierarchy. And upon further investigation, it's my year, quarter, month. That seems pretty high quality of life. But if we examine, I've taken the time in this model and we have a dedicated date table which has relationships over to our fact table, to internet sales. So that is the table we're predominantly gonna be using when there's anything time related here. What about these other items? It does show up, right? You can see this. If you try to go ahead and create some sort of either calculated measure or column and you reference that item in question, we're not gonna actually create something here. I'm just trying to show you something in, in the IntelliSense. But if I go to look at the birth date itself, you'll see as I go to select this column, it gives me an additional option here to choose a specific breakdown. This it actually is illustrating all of the columns that are available to me in the invisible table table. If anything, this is really the only way we somewhat interact with this. But other than that, once again, this is not available to us, right? If we go to the model view, it's still the seven tables. There's nothing, there's one day table and it's the one we created, right? So what is the impact here? Let me show you, right? 
This is where I'm gonna uh, tie into the third party tool. This is gonna be once again, DAC Studio. I'm gonna go ahead and hit external tools. I have all this already installed and this basically just a nice external tool. It's obviously for DAX purposes, for performance tuning and things such as that, uh, but it has a lightweight additional element here under advanced, which is gonna let us look at the scope and size of the model itself. But right away, this is my model. This is the actual Power BI report that we're working with and there's definitely more than seven tables here. So you can see for every one of those date time, those date or date time columns, We've added in a whole table here with seven columns. Here's seven columns here. It's only 2,000 records. This table, 26,000 records, basically. So you can see there's varying different number of rows because it's basically looking at the min and max range for each of the columns in question, right? This could become actually pretty problematic. If you have scenarios within your data model where you have like placeholder dates, maybe just momentarily you pop in a January 1st, 1900, December 31st, 2050 or something in the far future, that's gonna impact this and it's gonna even create a much bigger day table. So you have to be really cautious on that. But this is what's going on here. And what I wanted to showcase really quickly, if we go to advanced, this lets us look at the actual breakdown of the metrics of our actual model itself. Mainly I'm just looking at the size of the tables and you can see our customer table, one of the actual tables in our dimension is actually the largest, but then our third largest is actually one of these localized day table, the one with the 26,000 records, it's number three. And overall, if we look at this, Let's take a mental note. The size of this file is 11.03 megabytes, right? 11.03. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this out because we're gonna remedy this. I'm aware of auto date time. I know it's not necessary for me in this scenario because I've created my own date table. Within that date table also, we have the ability and opportunity to create our own user defined um, hierarchies, which we have done here, as you can see, already taken care of. So the fact that these are appearing might seem quality of life, but now we understand that there's more behind the scenes. Every one of these has a table tied to it. So now that I know that I don't need it, how do we clean this up, right? Because once again, if you're going this route and you're getting your own day table, this is something you really do not need. So I'm gonna go over here to the file option. We're gonna hit options and settings and then options. There are two locations where this feature will present itself. The first is immediately when you go into options and setting under the global category at the very top, data load, you'll see auto date, auto date time intelligence is right here. And it even tells you what's going on. It tells you it creates a hidden date tables for every date, date, time field in your model. So it's, it's here, you just might not, you know, I don't feel like you're usually aware of it when you're just looking at the model. If we disable this, this won't actually do anything for the current report we have in front of us, as this is only gonna be for new files. So literally, if you're starting a report from scratch, you can be like, I knowing that you're gonna be using a, your own dedicated date dimension table, I don't need to have this turned on. So it just kind of saves you a step if you, if you know you're gonna be disabling it anyways. If we wanna affect this table, I simply have to go here to data load. We can go to auto date time and remove this. And upon hitting okay, doesn't really seem like much has happened, but if we do pay attention, we do not have the indication for a uh, hierarchy, a system generated hierarchy here on this date column. If we go back to customer, the two from this table are gone. So what are the impacts of this? What do we see in the model? Sometimes we just does, does require for me to reload the PBX file, reload the report so it can refactor the model itself since we've made effectively changes here. But let's just take a look. Let's take a look at DAX Studio real quick. I do the same exact thing. You can see it's actually, I mean, it's how we would expect it to see. Right? We only have our seven tables here. And now when I go over to our view metrics and we take a look, no extra tables bloating it up. And we go from 11.03 megabytes to 8.11, right? Obviously we're working in a small data set, eight megabytes versus 11, not drastic. But when you think about the percentage difference, just hitting a checkbox and what that's done for this model, we want to have our models be as efficient as possible. And having these additional tables there is artificially bloating this up. And once again, we don't need it if we are taking the time to create these date tables and these date dimensions. So you, whether it's through us, through our training, whether it's through other blogs or other videos on YouTube, you'll hear the discussion, you'll hear the conversation about using date table and their benefits and how we use it with time intelligence. But just in case there's more around these date columns and I wanted to make sure that that was just something that's brought to your attention. Like I said, it's very useful in scenarios where maybe you don't have access or you know, you're unable to create your own dedicated date dimension. Um, I mean, it's pretty easy to do so, but maybe there's a scenario which won't allow for it. Or like I said, it's an extremely simple model. It's not gonna be growing that much. Not a lot of tables, not a lot of columns. 
in that case, auto date time, maybe that's all you're gonna go with. So think about this, keep this in mind. As you create your reports, there might be reports that you have right now that are actually leveraging this. Um, but like I said, if you want to also ex extend this knowledge, like think about the model, you're hearing about this date table and maybe that's a new concept, you're newer to Power BI and you just came across this video. If you don't have some of those more basic elements around modeling, make sure you do check out the recent Learn with the Nerds event from Mitchell. It's full, chock full of your standard elements, standard best practices that you wanna to follow to create scalable solutions. This is just one of those additional features that I wanted to make sure you're aware of because you kind of over time are doing these things, as you can see, it, it might not even be that noticed, but there is real impact here. And also, this is something that we go across whenever we do our, whether it's a private bootcamp or our public Power BI bootcamps, these are elements that we make sure to discuss. We create those tables, we create the dimensions, we create the facts, we define the relationships, but if auto date time's on in the background, like I said, we don't need that. We're trying to make an, as efficient a model as possible. So. Hopefully this is helpful. You know, let me know if you've come across a situation like that where you're looking at a model and it feels a little bit larger than you might've expected. You figured out this auto date time or maybe you came about it from this video. You uncheck that one box and boom, 15, 20% model decrease size, right? It can be pretty interesting, especially if you don't find yourself in a scenario where your organization leverages Power BI Premium. Remember, there's a maximum size that a Power BI data set can be this potentially could be one of those things that helps you stay underneath that limit. So hopefully that uh, is helpful for some of you. Hopefully now that brings some awareness to it. Maybe you already were, uh, but hope, I'm glad uh, for those who are able to take advantages, uh, advantage of this and it helps. I'm glad that I was able to enlighten you on one small thing that is in Power BI itself. As always, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.